So why do you want your primary interface to a computer to be programmable? The first reason is that there is a fundamentally limited amount of behavior that you can get by turning knobs and checking boxes. Configuration does not scale. To show you what I mean, here's some code that supports a lot of user options. Here's the customized variables that implement those options. And here's the alternative code that supports letting the user define their own function to put in whatever behavior that they want. As you can see, there is so much more code required to respect a whole lot of user options that might not even be active. This means that the code becomes more fragile over time, it becomes very difficult to add new options, and the program overall just gets more and more rigid. It is much easier and more scalable to support configuration through programming. We want things like hooks that allow the user to put whatever function they want at specific points in the program. We want things like advice that allow us to wrap behavior around the features that already exist in the program. Turning knobs and checking boxes is not a very good programming language. It's not very expressive, and it turns out that it's also not very easy to implement or maintain. The second reason you want a programmable interface is to speed up your return. The fundamental reason we are programming is to add automation and integration to workflows. We're making what we do more efficient, and if you can inject programming into your programming workflow, then you can make your programming more efficient. It is the fastest possible feedback loop, and it has the highest rate of return. The third reason you want to use a programmable interface is that bootstrapping never goes away. There is always a new generation of tools that comes along, and when they come along, the integrations for them are bad. The integrated tools are bad at handling them and it's the programmable tools that are first to reintegrate things. So now you've decided to use a programmable interface, which one are you going to use? We tend to judge the strength of ecosystems and tools in part by the primary language in which they are written. But the virtues of a programming language that make it good for building production scale backends aren't the same as the ones that make it good at gluing things together within our interface. Almost everything that we do in that programming language is going to sit on the other side of a keyboard. That means we're doing things mainly at human speed, at human scale. We are mainly going to be using this programming language to express very simple ideas. When I do this in this situation, go ahead and do that where that can mean doing more complex work like refactoring our software or playing a video. This is work that we tend to farm out to other processes that are not written in that language. And because we're going to be touching every single part of the system, the things that we end up wanting are things like visibility and flexibility. We want a live system that's debuggable while it's running, that's modifiable while it's running. These kinds of decisions put us in very good company with users of other lists like Clojure and Common Lisp and Scheme and Racket. These users are not going to go away. That is part of the ecosystem. And when you talk about Lisps, you get into macros and language nerds who like type systems, which means you get languages like Haskell and Rust. And users who care about serious dependency management for doing DevOps, so you get Nix users and Geeks users. These are just some of the examples of the strong groups that support the Emacs ecosystem. The last thing to know is that while some of these tools have longer histories than others, that for all of them, revolution is everywhere. Where we used to almost always interact with REPLs and farm out work to processes over POSIX interfaces, we are increasingly working alongside other programs that are running at the same time as our human speed tools. We've got language servers, and we're starting to have this other crop of programs become increasingly prominent. This is not only putting evolutionary pressure on the tools, but also on the processes that we use to develop them. Developing open software is a cooperative game, but we don't want to have our licenses taken away by people who don't want to compete with us or being forced to conform to a particular ideology in order to be represented or participate in a process. The fate of all these programmable interfaces ends up basically in the same place. They are all going to be basically anything to anyone. This is partly because they're programmable, but partly because the ecosystems understand that they grow through a addition. Whenever they support more things, whenever they do more things, they have a stronger ecosystem and that protects each individual user's interests. So when you're deciding which waves to ride, don't pay attention to who has the most knobs and checkboxes. Pay attention to who wants you to program and have programmability at the foundation of your toolbox. Emacs is a tool with an ecosystem that has embraced this idea of programmability at a very fundamental level. And if you want to learn how to use this tool in a very efficient way, subscribe to this channel and check out this playlist. It's done!